Good Sunday morning and welcome to the September 12th, 2021 edition of the Pastor's Porch. I'm Pastor Brian Schmidt, pastor of Calvary Alliance Church in beautiful Hiawassee, Georgia. As you can see, I'm not on the Pastor's Porch today. I'm actually at the Pastor's Church, which is located at Highway 76 East in the Chattoog Harbor Plaza, directly across from the Towns County Schools. And if you're watching this video and you live in the area, if you can see Brass Town Bald Mountain with the tower up on top, then you are close enough to come to church and visit with us, and we would be glad if you did. But I want to get into it today. I got a question. What came first, the chicken or the egg? All right, now that is a question that has been asked down through the years uh, for thousands of years. What came first, the chicken or the egg? And many, especially evolutionists, think that they have the answer, and the answer, they say, is that the egg, excuse me, of course came first. It was the egg. Now, the bottom line here is it really doesn't matter what came first, the chicken or the egg, because both make tasty food. And I am very thankful for chicken and for eggs. But it does lead me up to my next question. And that is, what is more important to the Christian, to the Christian, the follower of Jesus? What's more important to the Christian, either doing or being, all right? doing or being and and let me explain what i mean here all right doing christian things or being a christian now down to the years just like the chicken and the egg uh there have been those that have discussed this and debated this and what's more important and and there are those that have come down on the on the side of doing is important and i think a key word here is religion it's a religious thing to do 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 and then others have come down on the side of being. And the key word here is relationship. So is there an answer to the question, what's more important, being or doing, religion or relationship? Well, as with all of life's questions, especially when it concerns spiritual things, the best place to go is to the Word of God, the Bible. Uh, the Bible is our resource for the answers to life's most important questions, including this question of being or doing. And we're going to look today at a passage in the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 10. And we're going to begin in verse number 38. And we're going to go through this. Uh, it says, Now it happened as they went, it's talking about Jesus and his disciples, that he entered a certain village. Now, just from comparing Scripture to Scripture, we know that this village was Bethany. Uh, we know that from John chapter 11, verse 1, because the characters that we're going to see here in, the, in this passage, that's where they lived. They lived in Bethany, which is about two and a half miles southeast of Jerusalem. And it says here, uh, and he came to a, entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And again, comparing scripture to scripture, we know that this is Martha's house and that she had a sister named Mary. They also had a brother named Lazarus. And, and we know that these three siblings, that they were good friends of Jesus. And we can also surmise uh, from the scriptures that these three siblings were fairly well off financially. I mean, it says right here that Martha welcomed her, him into her house. And so she was a property owner. And then it was Mary, her sister, that uh, later on would break the alabaster flask of precious ointment that was worth a year's wages and would anoint Jesus' feet with it. And it's very possible that uh, this family, and especially Martha and Mary, were some of the ladies that are mentioned in Luke chapter 8, verse 3, uh, that cared for the physical needs of Jesus while he was on his ministry. And so that's the setting here. Uh, is the village of Bethany, the house of Martha and Mary and Lazarus. And it says here in verse 39, and she had a sister called Mary, who also <coughs> sat at Jesus's feet and heard his word. So here we have Mary, who was sitting at the feet of Jesus, and she was listening to him teach. And uh, sitting at the feet of a teacher or a rabbi was a sign of discipleship. Now, it's interesting to note that the three times that we see Mary in the Gospels, she is actually sitting, she is at the feet of Jesus. Here it is in Luke chapter 10, uh, verse 39, in their, in their home. But then in John chapter 11, verse 32, is the passage where Lazarus dies and he's buried. 
And it tells us that when Jesus came, that Mary ran to Jesus and she fell at his feet. And then also in John chapter 12, verse 3, and this is the story I alluded to earlier, when Mary uh, went to see Jesus as he was at a special dinner party and she anointed his feet with that precious ointment. All right, so every time that we see Mary, she is at the feet of Jesus. Pretty interesting. Uh, and, and as we see this little scene unfolding before us here in verse 39, we can see Mary. And I, I can just kind of see her sitting there at his feet, looking up and hanging on every word that he was sharing with her. Verse 40, but Martha was distracted with much serving. Uh, that, that word distracted is pretty interesting. Uh, the Greek word, I'm not sure if I'm going to say it right, is parasapeo. And, and the first part of that, para, all right? And, and you probably recognize that little uh, prefix, para. You got periscope, parapet. Para has something, has to do with things that go around, all right? And, and but sapeo has the idea of drawing and pulling, all right? So when it says she was distracted, she was pulled. She was drawn in different directions, around and around. She was going in proverbial circles. Now, as she was doing this, you know, she had the proverbial, not proverbial, I just made this up, uh, the Bethany buffet going on. Here Jesus is in their home in <coughs> Bethany, and she's preparing a special meal for him. It's kind of like getting ready for Thanksgiving dinner. And, and, you know, she had everything going. She had the turkey going. She had the ham going. Well, maybe not ham. They were Jewish. Uh, she had uh, lamb. We'll go with lamb. She had the green bean casserole. She had the sweet potatoes. And uh, she had the mashed potatoes and the gravy, the cranberry sauce, the Hawaiian sweet rolls. Oh. And, and then for dessert, she had the pumpkin pie and the apple pie and, and all that good stuff. And, and so she had a lot going on, getting this special meal ready for Jesus. And she had a lot of the proverbial irons in the fire, as it were, and keeping all those plates spinning. She had all the balls in the air. And so she was busy preparing this special dinner for Jesus and, and all these different things, pulling her in all different kinds of directions. Like, oh, you know, did I put the stuffing in the turkey? Do I have the marshmallows on the sweet potatoes? You know, did I put the 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 um the little French onion crunchy things on the green bean casserole? You know, uh, did I put the pie out to thaw? Or, you know, she had all these things going on and she was distracted with much serving. And then it says, and she, Mary, approached him. She, she, she looked around and it's like, where's Mary? She peeks through the door and there's Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus. She's sitting on the floor by Jesus as Jesus is sitting there in the lazy boy <laughs> recliner. Uh, just talking with Mary. And, and Martha, she's not only distracted, but she's also frustrated. And so she goes to Jesus, it says, and she approached him. And that, that word approach is pretty interesting. It has the idea to stand, to place nearby. to, And I can see her walking up to him and just kind of planting herself uh, with her hands on her hip and saying, now Jesus... You know, now, Jesus, don't you care? Because that's what she says here. She says, don't you care? Wow. Don't you care? This this word is really interesting. It's only used here and one other place. All right. The the only other place it's used in First Peter chapter 5, verse 7, where Jesus, the word of God says, casting all your care upon him. Why? For he cares for you. But but here here's Martha. She plants herself in front of Jesus, puts her hands on her hips and says, don't you care? She says, here I am slaving away in the hot kitchen, preparing the best meal ever. And Mary is here in the living room doing nothing. She's just sitting here. Don't you care? Well, of course he cares. All right. He, he cares for you. He says there in first Peter chapter five, verse seven. But she says, don't you care? She's like, Jesus, don't you care, she said, that my sister has left me? And, and so this is pretty interesting. Left means to leave behind, to abandon, to forsake. All right, so she's like, 
Jesus, don't you care that Mary's abandoned me in the kitchen with all the work? Now, it, it does inter it is interesting here, and I hadn't thought of this much before, but it does indicate that Mary actually had been helping. You know, you can't abandon something, you can't leave something that you weren't doing. And, and so it's important to note that Mary had indeed been doing something to help. But Martha is like, don't you care that Mary has abandoned me? And then her second accusation or concern, she says that my sister has left me to serve alone. All right. Don't you care, Jesus? Mary's abandoned me and now I'm serving alone. I'm doing this big meal for you and I'm having to do it all by myself. Mary was thinking about herself. And sometimes in the midst of the chaos of doing, we get our eyes off what's important and we see ourselves. All we see is ourselves. And then what does she do? She goes and says, <laughs> she says this to Jesus, therefore tell her to help me. Wow. You know, she's telling Jesus what to do. I, I don't know. I don't think I would have done that, but I wasn't in her place. But, you know, it, it, it is true, though, that a lot of times when we get our eyes on ourselves and we get our eyes off the Lord, that we oftentimes begin to tell God what to do. And we see our troubles, we see our issues, and we're start, we start to tell God, God, you know, you got to do this, you got to do that. Lord, I need this. Why don't you do this for me? And, and that's the wrong attitude to have. But I can imagine that as Martha stood before Jesus, that she was stressed out, perhaps even to the point of tears. And she's like, Jesus, don't you care? Oh. And she, she was worked up. You know, she had this big meal planned. She wanted everything to be perfect. And her sister, her helper, had abandoned her to do what appeared to be absolutely nothing. Warren Wearsby says this, Martha's problem was not that she had too much work to do, but that she had allowed her work to distract her and pull her apart. Isn't that so true? Isn't that what happens to us a lot? But distract her from what? To distract her from the most important thing in any of our lives, and that's the Lord Jesus. If we're not careful, even the best of intentions in serving Jesus can become more important than serving than Jesus himself. Let me say that again because I messed it up. If we're not careful, even the best of intentions in serving Jesus can become more important than Jesus himself. Something that we need to be careful on. We focus more on the serving rather than on the Savior. That's what Martha did. Verse 40, 41 says this. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha. Now, he says her name twice. And, and, and I, I can just see her doing that, see him doing that in order to get her attention, get her focus back. Because she's all out of sorts. She's distracted. She maybe even has some tears in her eyes and she's boohooing. And, and she's like, Martha, Martha, pay attention, Martha. Look at me when I'm talking to you, Martha. Hey, you remember your parents ever telling you that? Look at me when I'm talking to you. And then you look at them and then they say, don't look at me like that. But anyway, no. But Jesus is saying, Martha, Martha, look at me. Pay attention. I've got something important that I need to tell you. He said, you are worried. All right. And that word means anxious and troubled. The Greek word there is turbadso. That just sounds like a troubling word, doesn't it? You are you are worried, anxious, you are turbadzo. All right? It means turbid. It means to just be all upset inside. And have you ever felt that way where your insides are just a knots because you're very upset about something? That's what he said. Martha, Martha, you are anxious, you are troubled about many things. All right? Many things. A plurality of things. This Bethany buffet that she was preparing. She was worried about the turkey. She was worried about the lamb, the potatoes, the veggies, the bread, the dessert. All these things that she had going. She was worried about many things. 
But then verse 42, Jesus said this, but one thing is needed. One. You know, Jesus doesn't require a buffet of busyness from us. There's one thing that's needed, that's demanded, that's required. And, and, and he says, and Mary has chosen that good part. That, that, that word chosen is interesting. It has the idea of to call out from, to select out of, all right? It has the idea that there's a choice of two or more things. It's like when I and Debbie go, Debbie and I go to the sawmill, sawmill uh, restaurant in Blairsville for breakfast <coughs> and they give us a menu and, and we're ordering and, and there's so many choices. It's like we order, we order mama's breakfast or something like that. I forget what it's called now. All right. But it's like, well, how do you want your eggs? Do you want one egg or two eggs or three eggs? Do you want them scrambled? Do you want them fried? Uh, if you want them fried, you want sunny side up, uh, over easy or well, well done. All right. Eggs. You got all kinds of, and then it's like, well, what kind of meat do you want? Do you want the bacon? Do you want sausage? Oh, you want sausage? Do you want sausage patties or sausage links? Oh, okay, meat. What about, uh, do you want grits or gravy? That, to me, that's an easy choice. Gravy all the way. Grits, eh, but Debbie likes grits. All right, and, and then what kind of bread do you want? Do, do you want toast? Do you want a biscuit? Do you want a muffin? What kind of bread? And I get the biscuits because I have, something, I have to have something to put my gravy on, right? But so many choices. And, and that's kind of what... You know, Mary's got here, she's got a lot of choices, but Jesus says she picked the one thing out of all those choices, out of all those options. She chose to do what? To sit at the feet of Jesus. There is nothing more important than sitting at the feet of Jesus when he is in the house. Think about that. There's nothing more important than sitting at the feet of Jesus when he is in the house. And where is the house right now? Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus. Jesus is in the house. And nothing more important than sitting at the feet of Jesus. Our heart's desire should be to sit at the feet of Jesus, to be a disciple of Jesus, to be devoted to Jesus, to be a worshiper of Jesus. And, and the other options are good. Nothing wrong with turkey. Nothing wrong with mashed potatoes and gravy. Green bean casserole, oh, you know, wonderful stuff. Serving it, preparing it, uh, wonderful. But Mary's choice was the best because it had everlasting benefits. All the other things are temporary, but sitting at the feet of Jesus has everlasting benefits. What you do, all right, in terms of this question of doing or being, all right, what you do may be taken away from you, but who you are will last a lifetime. Think about it. Your hands that you use to serve may lose their strength, but your heart's going to live forever. You may lose your talents and those gifts that God has given you to serve, but the time you spend with Jesus will have eternal value. This passage illustrates one of ongoing questions facing believers today. What's more important? Being the person Jesus wants me to be or doing the things Jesus may want me to do? Well, I'm going to surprise you and say the answer is actually both. All right? The answer is that Mary had been serving. She had been in the kitchen. She had been helping prepare this wonderful meal for Jesus. Mary had been helping Martha with the Bethany buffet. And we also see that Jesus never condemned Martha for serving. He never said, oh, you shouldn't be serving. You need to be here at my feet like Mary. No, he, he never said that. Shepard, who's a, a New Testament scholar, wrote some excellent books, said this, it was not Martha's service that Jesus rebuked, but her over preoccupation with the material side, her nervous distraction, her anxiety, and her jealous burst of temper. All right? 
So both things are important. It is, it's important to do both, to do and to be. But the lesson that we learn is that the priority of the disciple, the follower of Jesus, is being before doing. J.D. Uh, Pentecost said this, Thus we see the principle that to be occupied with Christ is more important than to be occupied for Christ. And Wearsby again said this, What we do with Christ is more, far more important than what we do for Christ. And, and so what we're talking about here is going deeper in our relationship with Jesus be going before going further in our service for Jesus, all right? I want to say that again. The priority here is going deeper in our relationship with Jesus before going further in our service for Jesus. There's a, there's a famous bit of graffiti that was begun in 1968 by a guy named Bud Crew in a warehouse that he owned called Bud's Tool Cribs. It's in Richardson, Texas. And he scribbled on the wall, the way to do is to be. And he put Leo Tzu, a Chinese philosopher. Well, a couple weeks later, some salesman came in, Dale Carnegie, and he wrote underneath that, he said, the way to be is to do. All right, so the first guy wrote, the way to do is to be. The second guy wrote, the way to be is to do. And then some wisecracker came in and wrote under that, doobie, doobie, do, Frank Sinatra. And remember that? Strangers in the night, ba 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 bum bum And it goes doobie, doobie, do at the end, right? All right. And, and, but then also Shakespeare said what? To be or not to be, that is the question. Well, for the believer, the follower of Jesus, Forgetting Frank Sinatra and Dale Carnegie and Leo C and William Shakespeare, all right? Dooby dooby doo. All right. For for the believer, the follower of Jesus, to be is no longer a question. It is a necessity. To be. To be. Religion says do, but relationship says be. Having an ongoing, deeper relationship with Jesus is our highest priority. Our highest purpose is to be totally in love with Jesus, to be a devoted follower of Jesus, to be a passionate worshiper of Jesus. Worship is at the heart of all that we are and all that we do in the Christian life. A.W. Tozer said this, I believe that it might be well for us if we just stopped all of our busyness and got quiet and worshiped God and waited on him. You see, true worship comes from within and who we are, not from without in what we do. What we do is important, but we can't do without being. All right. Now, another way to say that is we can do, think about this. We can do without being. We can go through the motions. We can, we can do all kinds of service at church and in the community. We can do without being. And there's lots of people that do that. Even folks that don't know the Lord can do without being. But when we are being what we should be, we're going to automatically do those things that Jesus wants us to do. Again, A.W. Tozer said, we emphasize doing, getting things done, and so making a difference in the world. But in God's order, being precedes doing. Being affects how and why we do as well as what we do. Thus, being a growing Dynamic relationship with Jesus is our priority. The doing part will naturally come as we focus on being what Jesus wants us to be. So this morning, all right, this morning we have a buffet of options before us. All right, a buffet. Some are not very good options. 
living for self, me, myself, and I. Another option is living for the flesh, satisfying the basic needs and human cravings. Another bad option is living for the world, getting the newest, the biggest, the best. So there's bad options that we could choose from. But there's also good options. Living for family, that's good. Living for others, that's great. Living for country, living for the church. Those are all good options. But the best thing on the buffet, the one that we need to choose out of all the others, is living for Jesus and choosing to have a growing, dynamic relationship with him that goes deeper and deeper every day. Had to pick up my little note card that fell on the floor here. And why? All right, because I, I, I didn't think about it until just a little bit ago as I was preparing. Why? What's the big deal about having a deeper relationship with Jesus? What's the big deal about, excuse me, being instead of doing? Well, just, I, I, I jotted these down real quick. The world offers confusion. But what does Jesus offer? He offers confidence. The world offers despair. Jesus offers hope. The world offers brokenness. Jesus offers healing. The world offers uncertainty. Jesus offers stability, a foundation. The world offers hate. Jesus offers love. Nothing more important than living for Jesus, going deeper in your relationship with Jesus. Jesus is in the house. He's always in the house for the believer. He's always within us as the temple of God. And so I want to challenge us today. Choose this day to sit at the feet of Jesus. Oh God, thank you for the story that we have recorded in your word. And Lord, we thank you for the example of Mary and how Mary chose to sit at your feet. There was all other kind of things that she could have chose to do, but she chose to just sit quietly to listen to you so she could grow closer to you and go deeper in her relationship with you. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us today as believers in Jesus to have that desire, that passion, that craving to go deeper in our relationship with you. Lord, to focus on the being more than the doing. Oh, Lord, forgive me, Lord. I, I know I get busy. I get like Martha. I get stressed out. I get anxious. I get stressed out doing different things and many different things. And we need to have those times, though, and I need to have those times where I sit quietly and just worship you. And so, Father, I pray that for all of us as disciples of Jesus, Lord. Jesus is in the house. He's always in the house. Help us to sit at his feet, going deeper in our relationship with him. Forgive us when we get distracted. Forgive us when we get anxious. Forgive us when we get jealous, perhaps. but help us as the buffet of options come before us to be like Mary, to choose that best thing that can never be taken from us. And that's that deeper relationship with you. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, well, thanks for joining us today for the video. And I, 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 I'm gonna pray that all of us, me and you watching this video and then Sunday morning, folks at church, that we'll take this to heart and that we'll really focus on being the person that Jesus wants us to be and growing in that relationship with him day by day. Jesus is in the house. Sit at his feet. If you have any questions, comments, please email me, bkschmidt65 at gmail.com. Love to hear from you. Also, if you have any uh, um, prayer requests, that would be awesome to hear from you as well. Bk Schmidt. 
at gmail.com. Again, Calvary Alliance Church is our church. Our website is calvaryalliancechurch.com. I invite you to go there and uh, check us out. And then we are part of the Christian and Missionary Alliance, the CNMA, and the website is cmalliance.org. Just a wonderful, wonderful missions organization and so thankful to be a part of the CNMA. If you're in the area and want to worship with us, our Sunday morning worship is at 1030. Again, nothing fancy. All right, we've got a little worship team. You can see up there, uh, we've got a music stand. That's where my wife stands. And then we got one over here, right there. That's where Jim Ramzik plays guitar. And then back behind the cross here, uh, back there, we have a keyboard. And that's where Rich similarly plays the, the keyboard for us. And, you know, this, this Sunday, we're going to do video songs. We've got the screen up there. And, uh, you know, we're not professional, but we just love the Lord. We love people. And, and we've got a great church family. And uh, we're not about all the doing, but we're more about the being. We do do stuff. And uh, one of those things that we do is Tuesday morning, Adult Bible Fellowship, 927, Tuesday morning. And uh, again, we're in the Gospel of John. It's been a great, great study. I encourage you to join us. And then prayer me, to me, one of the most important things. And if we're going to do something, this is the most important thing that we got to do. We have to be a people of prayer. And so I know you don't have to come to church to, to pray, but there is something special about church family getting together to pray. All right. So if you're in the area, church family, come pray with us. If you don't have a church family, you're welcome to join ours and come pray with us. If you're watching this from some other place and uh, you, you already have a church, please support your church. Church's prayer meeting. I encourage you to do that. All right. Well, God bless you. And uh, God bless us as we go deeper in our relationship with Jesus. We'll talk to you next week.